Content warning. This episode of Popcorn Podcast discusses sexual assault and family violence. If you or someone you know needs help, please call 1-800-RESPECT in Australia. Hello, you're listening to a special interview episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we're joined by Justin Baldoni, the producer, director and star of It Ends With Us. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. It Ends With Us tells the story of Lily Bloom, a woman who overcomes a traumatic childhood to chase a lifelong dream of opening her own business. A chance meeting with charming neurosurgeon Ryle sparks an intense connection, but as the two fall in love, Lily sees another side of Ryle. When Lily's first love, Atlas, re-enters her life, her relationship is upended, and Lily realises she must make a tough choice for her future. It Ends With Us is directed by Justin Baldoni from a screenplay by Christy Hall based on the best-selling novel by Colleen Hoover. It stars Blake Lively, Justin Baldoni, Jenny Slate, Hassan Minaj and Brandon Sklenner. You may recognise our guest today as Baby Daddy Raphael from (laughs) Jane the Virgin, or perhaps you clocked him in The Young and the Restless, Charmed, or The Bold and the Beautiful. But what you may not realise is he is also a prolific producer, author, podcaster and film director who made his feature film directorial debut with Five Feet Apart, starring Cole Sprouse and Hayley Lou Richardson. Baldoni is also the founder of Man Enough, a movement and content studio founded on the belief that by undefining traditional roles and traits of masculinity, men will be able to realise their potential as humans and their capacity for connection. He spoke about his own journey with masculinity in a viral TED Talk, which has been viewed now over 8 million times. And he's also released books on the subject. He's the co-host of the Man Enough podcast, which explores what it means to be a man today and how rigid gender roles and messages of masculinity show up in relationships, body image, privilege, fatherhood, sex, success, mental health, and generally how it affects all of humanity. Now Baldoni is behind the camera once again, producing and directing this adaptation of Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us, but he also stars in it as the charming but troubled Ryle. Now Hoover's book is based on her mother's decision to leave her father when she was young, so it's very personal, and it spent 140 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. It's sold something like almost 10 million copies, and um, she's also currently the best-selling author in the US, like wow. full stop, period. <laughs> Her prequel, It Starts With Us, became actually the most pre-ordered book in Simon & Schuster's history. Wow, that's extraordinary. Crazy. So this is not only a hot topic story, but it obviously resonates with so many people. Yeah, exactly. And and sadly, so many people have experienced one form or another of the abuse depicted in this story. It's not something I talk about often or publicly, but Hoover's story also struck a really personal chord with me when I read it. So I was really eager to chat to Baldoni and learn more about what compelled him to be the one to make this movie and how he approached what is not only a really sensitive subject – but a story that has even fans of the books divided on its approach. I'm really looking forward to take a listen, Lee, so let's dive in. But 15 seconds, that's all it takes to completely change everything. How are you, Justin? Hi, Lee. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for agreeing to chat with a couple of fellow podcasters today. We really appreciate it. Oh my God, of course. Of course. So nice to meet you. I've read Colleen Hoover's novel and and loved it, but like some people had mixed feelings about how it was wrapped up. And after seeing the film earlier today, I was just so excited to speak with you about it because you seem to have understood some of those reservations. And there's a million questions that I want to ask you, but I only have a few minutes. So we'll start with what made you feel confident that you could tell this story, which is such a personal story for Colleen and countless women around the world with the care and nuance that it needed. I don't know if confidence was the right word. I don't know if I had the confidence, but I did have the, I did feel a strong sense of purpose that it was important and a responsibility to try to get it right. On one hand, for the diehard fans of the book, whose lives have been changed by the book, the Lily Blooms of the world. And on the other, for the actual 
people who are experiencing this, like the real life Lily Blooms. I know far too many women and people who've uh, been in this situation. And so it wasn't confidence. It was just, I, I just knew that it was important. And I believe that the the movie, like the book could really change lives. So I, so I'm, I'm honored that you felt that, uh, that it worked and that it, it lived up to your expectations because that is, that was, that was the reason for making the film. There obviously was a huge amount of care and due diligence taken in the creation of it behind the scenes. And I love how you've made the film equally about the lilies of the world, but also speaking to people who may be on a path to becoming Ryle, which mm-hmm. is refreshing because it, it moves that needle away from what women should do to avoid these situations. And how did you approach injecting some of that balance into what was a story told from Lily's point of view primarily? Well, the movie is completely told through Lily's point of view. And as you know, she's a bit of an unreliable narrator, which we learn at the end of the film, why, which is a situation that is very real to very so many people. I just wanted to make sure that we injected as much humanity into the movie as possible, you know, into the complexity um, of Ryle as an example, making sure that that he was a character that wasn't just one note and wasn't some like, you know, arch villain but he was a complex, deeply troubled, insecure man who also had amazing qualities because in order for this movie to work, you have to understand why she chose somebody like him. The reality is that, you know, after I read the book, one of the thoughts that came to mind was, you know, this could be a movie that helps people no longer ask the question, why did she stay? Yeah. Um, and so you can do two things at once. You have a film that shows the complexity and, and, shows visually why Lily stays with Ryle and the hard choice that she has to make throughout the movie. And then you also, like you said, have the ability to show men who may be on a similar path to Ryle, who haven't done the work, who haven't started the the process of healing, what can happen Mm -hmm. if they don't take care of themselves and how they can end up destroying their lives and hurting the person they love the most. And that's also where Mm -hmm. Atlas comes in because you have another character who also has a deeply pain full, you know, troubled, traumatic past, and who chose a different path for himself, and that he learned how to become a safe place for himself. Um, So it was just, it was just filled with all of so much richness of the human experience that I just felt that we could all glean so much from each of these characters in their journey. You've done such a fantastic job with it. And I'm being wrapped up. But just before I go quickly, maybe you could briefly. Sorry, you're over time. I want to understand. This is I want to answer her question. This is important. So thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Justin. Um, just, just very briefly, I noticed that the violence had been pulled back quite a bit in the film. What was the decision behind that? You know, sometimes when you read a book, I don't want to say sometimes, I'll say when you read a book as a book reader, and I'll use myself here, I create the level of violence that my brain is comfortable with as an example. So all of us have different comfort levels and all of us see the images in our mind differently as we read the words on the page. And so if you have a hundred people that, that read a scene where something violent happens, all 100 people will see different variations of that violence. And one of the hard parts about adapting a book and, and turning it into a movie is you have to find the balance to figure out how to get the message across while not making it, you know, not glorifying it, you know, not making it too intense or too grotesque that somebody's going to get up and want to leave the theater. And also understanding that A lot of people and a lot of women who see this movie are going to be coming in with their own traumatic experiences that that some may remember, some may not remember, and the chance to be triggered by this was very high. So it was much more about the emotion and the feeling of what was happening to Lily than it was visually seeing the violence of what was happening to Lily. I hope that makes sense. It does. Thank you so much, Justin. You've been absolutely amazing. And I I knew I'd love talking to you. (laughs) Thanks again for your time. Oh, love talking to you. Thank you for that last question. I appreciate it. None of this is your fault. This film was always going to be a huge one to tackle, right? You have to walk the line between themes of abuse and love while not romanticizing violence against women or certainly not excusing it. They've made some interesting changes to the film that hopefully fans of the book will understand and enjoy. Mm, I just just knew that Baldoni's passion for humanitarianism and and how much time and care went into telling this story, that he was going to be able to provide us with such intellectual and thoughtful insights into the making of It Ends With Us, and, and I wasn't disappointed. 
And it's really great that Hoover was so heavily involved in the adaptation. That's always really, really important. Super important. You've got to have the original, especially when this is such a personal story. You've got to have Mm. the original person whose story it is involved. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Now, it ends with us is in Australian cinemas from August 8 and US and UK cinemas from August 9. We hope you enjoyed this special interview episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim. And as always, friends, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. Come and join in on the conversation about the latest movies. You can follow us and share your film thoughts with us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Letterboxd.